Boo. Lepp Castle is considered by many to be the single most haunted castle in the world. From reported sightings of innocent, ghostly children, to a grotesque and imposing spirit that dates all the way back to the time of the Druids. Ever since I was little, I've always had a fascination with the paranormal, but as I've grown older, I've become a little bit more critical of some of the more sensationalized ideas of ghosts, like poltergeists or ghosts caught on camera, stuff like that. I'm not saying that I think all of those are fake, I just think that those are often the most exaggerated. But as I was looking through some of the more notorious ghost sightings from around the world, Lepp Castle is one that really stood out to me. There are a few reasons why I chose to cover this location in particular, not because of all of the ghost sightings, although that does help, but for one, Lepp Castle is very old. I couldn't find an exact date on its construction, but it was constructed smack in the middle of Ireland sometime between the years 1250 and 1400 AD, and it has certainly seen its fair share of tragedy over the centuries. And it's not just confined to the castle itself, even the land surrounding the castle is said to be a hot spot for paranormal activity on its own. In fact, there's evidence of the castle being built over a much older structure that dates all the way back to the Iron Age, which was well over 2,000 years ago. The castle's first occupants were a family known as the O'Carrolls, and to say that the O'Carrolls were a happy family is a stretch of the imagination to say the least. They did not get along. To start off, the clan leader Ferganinium O'Carroll had four sons, but I'm only going to focus on two of them for now. The two sons were named Teague and Thaddeus O'Carroll. Teague was known by many as One-Eye because, well, he was blind in one eye. And Thaddeus was a priest, so he was simply known as Thaddeus the Priest. Then later after their father Ferganinium O'Carroll passed away, Thaddeus was next in line to take over as clan leader. And his brother Teague O'Carroll was like, um, no. So while Thaddeus was performing mass in the chapel inside of Lepp Castle, Teague rushed in and in front of the whole family, he killed Thaddeus by impaling him with a sword. And from that moment on, that room was known as the Bloody Chapel, which we'll come back to in a little bit. There are conflicting reasons as to why Teague killed Thaddeus, but some say it was because of a political disagreement, while others say Teague wanted to be the clan leader in place of his brother. Either way, that was not the end of the whole situation. A few years later, Teague's cousin, Cahir O'Carroll, murdered Teague, and after that, one of Teague's other brothers, named William, wanted revenge on Cahir for murdering Teague. So William then murdered Cahir, out of vengeance. Then for a few years, William ruled as head of the O'Carroll family, however he was also murdered by a relative from another family. After which William's son, John O'Carroll, became the clan leader. Which was also short-lived because Teague O'Carroll's son, Mulrooney O'Carroll, then murdered John. <laughs> which resulted in John's brother Charles, murdering Mulrooney. Whew. I know that was pretty complicated, but I just wanted to show you that there was never a dull moment in this castle. People were being murdered all the time. So when you think about the historical background of this castle, it's easy to see why so many people believe it to be a very haunted place. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask. If you're enjoying today's video, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell button to be notified of all of my weekly uploads. Alright, that's it. Moving on to the castle's later history, in 1667 the castle passed from the O'Carrolls to the Darby family, who I can say were at least a little bit less murder happy than the O'Carrolls, but I'll come back to that. However, the Darbys would often hold seances in the castle, which started rumors of the castle being haunted as early as the late 1600s. The castle remained in the Darby family for roughly 250 years until in 1922, Lepp Castle was very unfortunately burned to the ground during the Irish Revolution. 
After which, in late 1922, during renovation and restoration work on the castle, a trapdoor was discovered leading down to a chamber known as an oubliette. An oubliette is essentially just a dungeon, but with only one entrance through a trapdoor in the ceiling. And inside of this oubliette were over 150 human skeletons impaled on wooden spikes. And apparently, as if this couldn't get any worse, the O'Carroll family used the oubliette as a sort of body pit. Um, there's one instance of the O'Carrolls hiring a group of mercenaries to fight for them, and afterwards they invited the mercenaries for a feast at Lep Castle. But unknown to the mercenaries, the food that they were being served was, well, it was poisoned. So after all the mercenaries were killed, their bodies were simply thrown into the oubliette and left there. There was actually a time recently when an old pocket watch was found in the oubliette among all the skeletons, indicating that the chamber could have been used as late as the mid-1800s. Although it might be a possibility that the pocket watch just fell in, but it's hard to say for sure. Anyway, I think that's enough of the castle's history for the moment, but now I want to get into some of the hauntings that have been reported over the years. There are supposedly a lot of paranormal hotspots throughout the castle, and one of the most commonly mentioned is the Bloody Chapel, which is the same place where Teague O'Carroll murdered his brother Thaddeus while he was performing mass. Visitors at Lep Castle often report seeing Thaddeus himself wandering through the Bloody Chapel and down the spiral staircase only to disappear into thin air. Even people passing by the castle claim to see ghostly lights emanating from the windows of the Bloody Chapel. As for the rest of the castle, some of the most interesting accounts of ghost sightings come from a woman named Mildred Darby, who was actually the last Darby to live in the castle before it was burned down. While living in the priest's house, which is this section of the castle right here, she often described seeing a figure that resembled a monk that would wander the halls at night. Another spirit that's said to haunt the castle is widely regarded as the most terrifying. And this spirit is known as the Elemental. That's kind of a cool name, actually. The Elemental is thought to be an entity that was placed on the property for protection by ancient druids who supposedly used the site as a place of worship, well before the castle was even built. During Mildred Darby's time at Lep Castle, she mentioned encountering the Elemental on a couple of occasions. One night she described that while wandering the halls, she suddenly felt two cold hands grip her shoulders from behind, to which she immediately turned around, and in her own words she described the encounter like this. I saw, as clearly as I see you now, a gray thing standing a couple of feet from me, with its bent arms raised as if it were cursing at me. I cannot describe in words how utterly awful this thing was its very undefinableness, rendering the horrible shadow more gruesome. Human in shape a little shorter than I am, I could just make out the shape of big black holes like great eyes and sharp features. But the whole figure, head, face and all, was gray, unclean. So definitely a little bit of an unnerving description. Uh, further descriptions of the elemental by Mildred describe it as a very short entity with the face of a human but the body of an animal, followed by a very distinct and awful smell. Also an interesting thing about the elemental is that it's not unique to just Lep Castle. In fact, similar spirits are said to haunt old sites all across Ireland and the United Kingdom, which I find kind of interesting that there have been multiple sightings that are separate from each other, but also a little bit scary. There is another theory that debates that the elemental may not have come from the druids at all. Uh, some believe that it could be a spirit of one of the O'Carrolls who died of leprosy while living at the castle, which could explain its appearance and smell as it's described by Mildred Darby. I do have my own theory as to who the elemental could actually be. It's possible that maybe it's one of the many victims who were thrown into the oubliette. Because seeing as though there were over 150 corpses thrown into the pit and just left there over the years, that had to have generated a pretty distinct smell, which could account for the odor that follows the sightings of the elemental, 
as if it's a residual smell radiating from the spirit itself. Another ghost that's said to wander the halls of the castle is known as the Red Lady. People who claim to see her describe her as a very tall woman cloaked in red, often carrying a dagger, raising it above her head as if she's ready to attack. Also, those who encounter her describe feeling an intense coldness around them. Now, it's not really clear who this woman could have been in the past, but it's rumored that she could have been a woman who was captured by the O'Carrolls, and while imprisoned, she ended up having a baby, and who shortly after its birth was then murdered with a dagger by the O'Carrolls. Then, in a state of extreme distress, the woman ended her own life with the very same dagger. Hence the sightings of her spirit carrying a dagger. A couple more commonly seen spirits throughout the castle are simply known as Emily and Charlotte. Those who have supposedly seen these two spirits describe seeing two little girls running about the castle's various battlements and staircases, often disappearing as soon as they appear. It's said that the two spirits are that of two little girls who once lived in the castle. It's rumored that Emily died after falling from the castle walls, and sometimes people report seeing the apparition of Emily climbing along the battlements before slipping and falling, but then just before she hits the ground, she disappears. All of these ghostly sightings largely came to light after the former owner, Mildred Darby, came forward to tell her stories, which was a huge factor when it came to the castle getting its label as one of the most haunted in the world. And ever since then, many visitors to the castle have reported seeing similar entities. The current owner of the castle is a musician named Sean Ryan, who bought the property back in 1991. And as of today, he and his family are still working on restoring the castle. And he maintains that Lep Castle is definitely haunted, but not necessarily by anything malevolent. For the time that he's been there, he's described the hauntings to be entirely harmless with shadows roaming the halls just out of the corner of your eye, along with lonely spirits who brush up against you simply to let you know that they're still there. And I think that's how most hauntings are, not the over-sensationalized, hyper-terrifying ghosts caught on camera, or anything like that. They're simply people from a different time just making their presence known and telling you that they still have a story to tell. All right, here we are at the end. And I just want to say, whether you do or you don't believe in claims of ghosts or even claims of the paranormal in general, I don't think you should ever be afraid to visit some of these old locations. At least not on the account of supposed ghostly activity. Because at the end of the day, there's still so much to see and learn from these places. Alright, if you enjoy hearing about the supposed hauntings of Lep Castle, feel free to stick around. Um, I hope you have a spooky Halloween, and I'll see you in the next one.